Section 7 of Oscar Wilde, Art and Morality, A Defence of the Picture of Dorian Gray, edited by Stuart Mason. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giessen. Section 7 the sphere of art and the sphere of ethics are absolutely distinct and separate mr oscar wilde's defence to the editor of the st james's gazette footnote june the thirtieth sir in your issue of this evening you publish a letter from a london editor which clearly insinuates in the last paragraph that i have in some way sanctioned the circulation of an expression of opinion on the part of the proprietors of lippincott's magazine of the literary and artistic value of my story of the picture of dorian gray allow me sir to state that there are no grounds for this insinuation i was not aware that any such document was being circulated and i have written to the agents messrs ward and locke who cannot i feel sure be primarily responsible for its appearance to ask them to withdraw it at once no publisher should ever express an opinion of the value of what he publishes that is a matter entirely for the literary critic to decide i must admit as one to whom contemporary literature is constantly submitted for criticism that the only thing that ever prejudices me against a book is the lack of literary style but i can quite understand how any ordinary critic would be strongly prejudiced against a work that was accompanied by a premature and unnecessary panegyric from the publisher a publisher is simply a useful middleman it is not for him to anticipate the verdict of criticism i may however while expressing my thanks to the london editor for drawing attention to this i trust purely american method of procedure venture to differ from him in one of his criticisms he states that he regards the expression complete as applied to a story as a specimen of the adjectival exuberance of the puffer here it seems to me he sadly exaggerates what my story is is an interesting problem what my story is not is a novelette a term which you have more than once applied to it there is no such word in the english language as novelette it should not be used it is merely part of the slang of fleet street in another part of your paper sir you state that i received your assurance of the lack of malice in your critic somewhat grudgingly this is not so i frankly said that i accepted that assurance quite readily and that your own denial and that of your critic were sufficient nothing more generous could have been said what i did feel was that you saved your critic from the charge of malice by convicting him of the unpardonable crime of lack of literary instinct i still feel that to call my book an ineffective attempt at allegory that in the hands of mr anstey might have been made striking is absurd mr anstey's sphere in literature and my sphere are different you then gravely ask me what rights i imagine literature possesses that is really an extraordinary question for the editor of a newspaper such as yours to ask the rights of literature sir are the rights of intellect 
i remember once hearing m renan say that he would sooner live under a military despotism than under the despotism of the church because the former merely limited the freedom of action while the latter limited the freedom of mind you say that a work of art is a form of action it is not it is the highest mode of thought in conclusion sir let me ask you not to force on me this continued correspondence by daily attacks it is a trouble and a nuisance as you assailed me first i have a right to the last word let that last word be the present letter and leave my book i beg you to the immortality that it deserves i am sir your obedient servant oscar wilde sixteen tight street s w june twenty eighth the last word we should be sorry to deny the ex-editor of the woman's world the feminine privilege of the last word for which he pleads to-day at the same time we cannot admit that we force upon mr oscar wilde the burden of a newspaper controversy by daily attacks mr wilde published a book and presumably submitted it to criticism we exercised our rights as critics of contemporary literature by pointing out that we thought the book feeble and offensive mr wilde replies defending his book against our unfavourable criticism and we have again the right to point out that we do not consider that he has satisfactorily met our arguments and our objections for the rest we are quite willing to leave the picture of dorian gray to the immortality it deserves we must add one word we congratulate mr wilde on his emphatic disavowal of the ridiculous puff preliminary which his publishers had chosen to circulate two days later july the second the editor could not resist one more word modest mr oscar wilde he has been having a little dispute with the daily chronicle as well as with the st james's gazette and this is what he writes to our contemporary my story is an essay on decorative art it reacts against the crude brutality of plain realism it is poisonous if you like but you cannot deny that it is also perfect and perfection is what we artists aim at end of section seven